Hello, and welcome to another language design video on Gren. Today, the topic is interop. Uh, and uh, the way we're going to do this, I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to give a brief summary of how interoperability, interoperable, interoperability, I'm going to give a brief description on how interop works today. And then we're going to start talking a little bit about how interop will change moving forward. So the way interop works today in Graham is inherited from Elm. It works pretty much exactly the same. We have two ways of doing it. There are ports, which is available to anyone. Um, and uh, it's is is the documented way of performing interop code and then there is kernel code which we try not to talk about <laughs> and which is limited to core packages now i'll get back to why that is but one thing that a lot of people have been asking you know since we've inherited the elm approach but since gren doesn't have any goal of staying compatible with elm people have been asking will our stance on kernel code change and the short answer to that is no. And I'll get back to why that is, and I'll also explain why that isn't necessarily a bad thing. So stay tuned, right? But first, we have ports. Ports allows us to call JavaScript or allows JavaScript to call us as a managed side effect. That means that if you're calling JavaScript, we get a command in return. And if that command is kind of like you just ignored, nothing happens. It's a, it's a purely managed side effect that works like any other managed side effect in Grant. And if JavaScript is calling us, that is exposed as a subscription. And both of these things requires that you set up an Elm architecture and it essentially allows you to, essentially you're exposing side effects as messages in a message passing state machine. Um, there is some automatic translation between Gren and JavaScript types uh when you're calling uh javascript or being called by javascript through ports uh there's nothing fancy so like if you want to if you want to do some uh fancy stuff then you're gonna have to write json decoders and json encoders but the very basic stuff you don't have to write a lot of encoders for that um the benefit of ports is that all the guarantees of the gren language is maintained uh, side effects are managed. Mutation doesn't happen, at least not visibly. Um, uh, there are no exceptions. You know, your Gren code is safe. It's untainted from JavaScript. Uh, and another benefit of that is that the compiler can assume that all Gren code is pure because, it's, you know, it still is. And so the compiler can make optimizations uh, assuming that the world is a safe place. And if you're writing static analysis or if you're just reading code, you know that interrupting with JavaScript in this way doesn't violate any of the guarantees that you are familiar with. The problem with interop, or the problem with interoperating with JavaScript through ports is that ports is essentially an asynchronous mechanism. There is a performance overhead because every single interop call is, is wrapped in a command and a message is being sent and all that stuff. Um, and this, again, triggers some extra ceremony. You need an architecture, you need a case statement on which messages have I received. Uh, and uh, all this is made worse by the fact that commands don't really compose well. You can't perform a command and then say, when this is done, do this. Instead, you have to wait to get a message from a subscribing port. And when that happens, you can do this. And, and all of this is a lot of work. If all you want to do is get a value from JavaScript and then send the value back, right? Do some computation and send it back, right? It's a lot more code than you would think is necessary. And it's a lot more code than is necessary in other languages that has interop. But again, the benefit is all the guarantees that you know and love still work the same way. Kernel code is very different. Kernel code allows you to call JavaScript functions directly in a synchronous manner. Uh, and the compiler simply trusts 
that the kernel code implementation is correct. So if you're calling a function and you're saying that this function takes ints, the compiler will just take your word for it. The benefit of this is that there is no overhead, right? Calling a function that is implemented with kernel code is the exact same thing as calling a JavaScript function. And so, it's, you know, there's no hoops to run through and the performance is good. Uh, and there's no extra boilerplate to make sure that everything is safe and good. Um, but the problem with this is that you have no managed side effects. That kernel code can perform mutation. It can throw an exception. It can return a value which when you access a field on it, it will blow up. Right? There is no guarantees that after you've called kernel code, your program will continue to work. Said in other words, kernel code, if you're not careful, will break every safe guarantee that grant gives you. And because of that, kernel code is limited essentially to me, right? Any sort of kernel code that is in the system, I have to sign with my Git signature. And that's not only to be uh, it's not that I don't trust people. It's not that I, um, it's not that I, uh, it's not that I don't trust people. It's just that, you know, <laughs> the guarantees that Grant gives me are so important that I don't want to risk those guarantee disappearing just because someone imports a library, right? Um, but it's not only that. Uh, it's also because the current implementation of kernel code is user hostile and error prone. Uh, if you mess up the syntax for kernel code, the compiler won't yell at you. It might even compile, right? And then blow up at runtime. And if it does blow up at compile time, it will just tell you that I crashed. You will get no indication of what's going wrong. Uh, and even worse, like when you write in kernel code, you have to know how to write JavaScript code in such a way that it works well with the compiler. And, uh, you know, even I, who knows how kernel code works reasonably well, mess this up on a daily basis. Uh, I will write code that works, and then I compile the code with the optimized flag, and now nothing works. <laughs> and it's because I messed up something in kernel code. Uh, and I think my, my favorite kernel code error is that it will just fail to compile. Uh, there is there is one kernel code file that has no imports. Um, and so there at the very top of the kernel code file, there's an empty comment section. And that's an implementation detail. You don't have to know why, but every kernel code starts with a uh, code block or a comment block uh containing alum style imports and there's one file that doesn't have that uh, and when i run prettier through it it adds a space at the very last section of that comment block and that space crashes the compiler <laughs> and figuring that out was not fun and it took a lot of time so and 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 I'm I'm saying this just to point out how user hostile, how error prone, how horrible it is to work with kernel code. You don't want kernel code, especially not its current implementation. Uh, and because of these things, you know, like kernel code is guaranteed to break in the future. Uh, not only because it's error prone, not only because it's not documented or you know type checked or whatever. It's also because the way it's written now, it's completely opaque. The, the compiler has no insight into what the JavaScript does, and the compiler has no way of optimizing that JavaScript in any way, shape, or form. So kernel code will change, and when it changes, it will break. And every single thing that's implemented in kernel code will break. Uh, inviting people to write kernel code, knowing full well that this is guaranteed to break, This is not a great idea. Uh, and I also think that there are too many things already being implemented as kernel code. I want less kernel code. 
if only for my own sanity and future maintainability of the platform. Now, the, the number of lines of kernel code will grow, and that's because Gren has a bigger scope than Elm. Gren wants to give you access to every Node.js API. That's, you know, every built-in Node.js API. We want to give you access to web platform APIs. So the number of lines of kernel code will grow, but I'm hoping to, you know, comp if you if you take the subset of kernel code that is identical to kernel code in Elm, I want Grant to have less. I want to shrink uh, the places where we need kernel code. And another thing to note is that kernel code is fundamentally incompatible with WebAssembly. And the reason that's important is because down the line, I hope that Grand will target WebAssembly instead of JavaScript. I'm not going to go into why, but that is like a future goal. And every language design question revolves around the fact, how easy is this to support in WebAssembly? It's not a deal breaker, but, you know, it's a concern that I have. Now, at this point, I want to point out, it's not a goal of mine to limit interop. I don't have anything directly against people interoperating with JavaScript or interoperating with other WebAssembly functions for that matter. But the goal is to keep Gren pure. That is that is the number one goal. Gren is a pure language and it's more pure than most other pure languages. And I want to keep it that way. That is the primary concern. And another, another thing that's important to me is that, you know, if people write something really cool today using kernel code i don't want that to break in the future right and the only way to do this is to keep people from writing kernel code or at least keep them from writing a lot of it i want to keep it reasonable until we can replace it with something better but that means that there are i'm open for improving the interop story in grant i don't have anything against improving interop i just want to do it in a way that maintains the guarantees of the platform and that are relatively forward compatible. Uh, now, one of the most obvious things is to allow uh, is to allow you to define ports that works as a task as opposed to a command, right? I want to call a port and I want that call to return a task instead of a command so that I can chain port calls using task and then uh, and, and, you know, do error handling and that sort of stuff. That is like an obvious thing that we can do, which isn't a huge amount of work, but would still deliver a lot of value. But I also think if we stop there, I think there are, you know, even more, I think there are better ways. I think, I think there are ways we can do even more. And one of the things that I've been thinking about lately has been to define an API that the compiler will understand that would allow you to define a way of, I don't know, like, like let's say there was a Gren API that allowed you to say, I'm going to call window.localstorage.get with a string. And the return value of that will be a string. Let's just say you could define that as a data structure in Gren. And then the compiler, when it saw this type, will generate said JavaScript, insert checks at the call site and the return site that actually verifies that the types are correct and expose that as a task. It would still be an asynchronous form of interrupt, but it would be a managed side effect. And for things that are side effectful in nature, that would essentially give you all the interrupt you wanted. If such an API existed, people could themselves, it wouldn't have to be a core contributor concern, it wouldn't have to be like something that affected a core team. People could themselves implement local storage, WebSocket, uh, server side events, uh, possibly even a Canvas API, right? It wouldn't have to be something the core team developed with. And it will still be safe. It will still be pure, but it will be available to anyone. It wouldn't necessarily be something you could do for everything. Like if you wanted to download a math library, having to do math in an 
in a task-based manner would be annoying. So it would be like it wouldn't solve everyone's problem, but a lot of kernel code that's being written today could be implemented using that stuff, and a lot of people could implement API bindings to some package, or maybe even they could essentially create new platforms using this um, without without sacrificing the, the guarantees of the language and without involving the core team. And as long as you're doing things that are side effects by nature, this will be just as good as everything else. Or, you know, this would, this would, wouldn't be any worse than kernel code. It would give the same limit. It would give you the same things as kernel code, but in a safe manner. Um, there are things that doesn't work that way. Like you know, arrays, strings, integers, these are fundamental data structures that you just can't wrap in tasks. That would be hugely annoying and nonsensical. But those sort of things are so intrinsic to the platform that they could be implemented as compiler intrinsics, meaning that the compiler knows what an array is, knows what a string is, knows what's an integer, and knows the operations you can perform them and have that being reflected in the AST. And normal people wouldn't be affected by this but for the compiler authors, this means that we could actually optimize a lot better because the compiler knows what these things are. But also if we were to switch from JavaScript to WebAssembly in the future, the compiler could just generate that code. Like that part of code generation wouldn't really be that difficult to change. We wouldn't have to rewrite a lot of kernel code to get that working. And I just want to reiterate at the end that the, the long-term goal, like ideally, there will be no kernel code in the future. I mean, there are certain things that I, I'm pretty certain will remain as kernel code and it will probably stay with us. But I'm hoping with some of the above uh, ideas, some of the ideas that I just mentioned, most of it can be removed. And that would be, for everyone, a lot better. And if we can't remove kernel code entirely from like user um, visible code and APIs, then I at least hope we are able to define better primitives to implement with kernel code and then build on top of that. So for instance, the virtual DOM APIs, almost entirely kernel code, at least the most important parts. And it would be great if we could simply like define uh, document get element, document insert node, as kernel code and then build the rest of the virtual DOM on top of that. I don't know if that would actually be feasible, but I hope, but like to me, if we ignore the runtime characteristics of that, that would be a much better way of having kernel code, implementing small primitives and building pure grin on top of those instead of implementing huge uh, sections of code in untyped, unchecked JavaScript. So that's what I had to say on interop and the future of interop in Gren. Um, I hope people got the impression that yes, we are going to stay just as strict that as Elm is, but at the same time, we're hoping to improve what we have and enable more use cases, essentially giving more freedom back to the user without sacrificing the guarantees of the platform. Thank you for watching.